This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. The time right now is 427 here on your Monday morning, a new work week. Thank you for joining us here on RTV6. I'm Lauren Casey. I'm Rafael Sanchez, pulling in for Meredith Berg. What a great weekend. So oh my goodness, yes. it's great to start the weekend with week with you. So here we go, right? Another All week. Right. Yes, another work week. And we do want to start things off with breaking news that we're following this yeah. morning. And this involves a shooting that took place at a gas station, a Shell gas station near 71st in Michigan. We can tell you that a victim was found there in serious condition, transported to the hospital. Hospital. Right now, we're still working to learn more information, but this is just one thing that we're following, and we're following a lot of shootings, so it's just been kind of a violent time. About in four people shot already in the last yeah. 10 hours. We'll keep track of that. Today's also a Storm Team 6 alert day. Look who's back from vacation. He's back. Uh, just hovering <laughs> overhead. They're coming back, people. Don't buy it. By Thursday, everyone you know will be back on this program. Yeah. Welcome back. Yeah, it's good to be back. Yeah. Spend some family time home. It's uh, your with show. My mom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, niece and nephews and cousins, so I had a great time. So it's always good to be back, though. Uh, Storm Team 6 Alert Day, as you mentioned, primarily for later on this evening and then into the overnight hours. The first half of the day, it's going to be mainly dry. There are a few spotty showers out there to the north right now, but it's really warm. It's really muggy with temperatures that are in the 60s and also the 70s here this morning. So as we go throughout the day today, partly cloudy skies, but we'll look for those strong to severe storms to develop later on this evening with a high temperature right around 89 nine degrees for some areas that get into the storms a little bit earlier probably a little bit cooler than that but definitely an afternoon and evening and then potentially into the overnight hours that you need to remain alert for the potential of the severe weather damaging wind will likely be the main threat with these storms as they start to roll through accompanied by some needed rainfall but the rain could be pretty heavy in spots Todd thank you so much we'll see you in a few minutes or so all right Todd thank you well we are talking about an issue up in Carmel and sports areas Area has been vandalized for the second time in just a week. They can see the video here on your screen. Um, we can tell you that the thieves there were caught on camera and obviously the people are disappointed because there are spray paints, items stolen, thousands of dollars worth of damage. This is at Badger's Field in Carmel. So obviously they want help seeing if you know the people in this video, you can see the screenshots right there. They were all caught on camera. So this was a group that vandalized the sports center. So obviously we're gonna keep showing their pictures so we can see if anyone can Call. There's a call to action on, a this call, issue, yeah. on this issue. Of course, the one more thing working for you, we're getting results. A mother concerned about the lack of bus stop signs mm -hmm. on some busy roads on the west side. Why that could not get done by the school system, but we found a way to make a difference. That story also coming up this morning on Good Morning Indiana. So much is going on. <laughs> Todd is back. The weather is busy. Traffic with Lauren. Stand by as Good Morning Indiana starts in just a few moments. This is Good Morning Indiana, working for you. A trio of shootings sends four people to the hospital overnight. What we're learning about these active investigations. A busy night in Indianapolis indeed, plus a Central Indiana sports organization targeted by vandals multiple times over the last week. This morning, how you can help get the vandals off the streets. It is a Monday morning. I am Rafael Sanchez filling in for Meredith Barrick, who hopefully is sleeping <laughs> and or enjoying the sun, doing something fun. I don't know. Oh, I'm sure she's sleeping yeah. right now. I can pretty much guarantee you that. Thanks for joining us. I'm Lauren Casey, and we're happy to have Todd Clausen back this week to talk about the forecast. And today is a Storm Team 6 you, alert you day. Came I came back. I came back. Oh, Just yeah, in that, time for the storm. Never a doubt. Never, never a doubt. <laughs> what, the flights got canceled a couple times. But yeah. I, can't do like weather. I can't do weather. So you've got to um, come back. I'm sure you could. If you had to, right. here's the clicker. Let's see. Let's test it right off the bat. All right, outside right now, we're dealing with some rain across parts of central Indiana. As Raphael mentioned, it is a Storm Team 6 alert day. The alert mode is primarily for this afternoon and then into the evening hours. There will be some showers in and around the area throughout the course of the morning hours. And you can see a few of these already from Hartford City back through Marion up into the Peru and Logansport area. And these will move through with maybe a quick downpour, a little bit of light rain, and that is just about it. Otherwise, partly cloudy skies. But as you look back off to the west, it's really these big complexes of storms that we'll be keeping an eye on. And this one will likely maintain itself and roll eventually through central Indiana later on this 
afternoon and into the evening hours. And that is why we are in the alert mode. So you may want to grab the umbrella as you walk out the door here this morning. The better chance of you having to use the umbrella, though, is going to be as we progress throughout the day. 72 in Indy right now, 70 in Bloomington, 69 in Lafayette, 67 in the Richmond area. Throughout the day today, temperatures will get up close to 90 degrees with some humidity around as well. We could top the 90 degree mark. It just depends on how quick the clouds move in and eventually the storms. Uh, but we'll keep it in the upper 80s as of right now. We'll talk more about these storms in detail for you coming up in just a few minutes. But at 432, let's get a first look at the roadways on this Monday morning. All right, Todd, thank you so much. And here's a live look right now at I-465 in Brookville Road. Just a reminder, as you're heading to work, this is your first work day of that new closure and one whole quadrant of I-465 traveling eastbound and northbound there on the southeast side. Like right here at I-465 in Brookville Road, you can see traffic in the opposite direction is open and you can still get by southbound and westbound, but the other lanes are closed. This caused quite a backup even over the weekend, not during rush hour. So as we get closer to the rush hour, we're going to monitor any delays along that detour route. Let's take a live look at the detour route right now, and I can tell you everything is moving along smoothly at I-65 and Keystone Avenue. So that is good news for your commute. We'll continue to monitor everything with this closure and keep you updated throughout the morning. The time now is 4.33 and making news right now. We are following breaking news from the city's northwest side this morning. Two people recovering following the shooting at a Shell gas station. Now this all unfolding around near 71st and Michigan Road. Uh, police tell us the victims are taken to the hospital in serious condition. What led up to the gunfire still remains under investigation at this hour. And new this morning, investigators on the city's near northwest side are looking into a pair of shootings. The first scene happened near Udell in California. The call came in just after 9 o'clock last night. The victim from the scene was taken to the hospital in critical condition. And then just six minutes later and just blocks up the street, a second per call for a person shot. When officers arrived at Eugene in California, they found another man shot. He was taken to the hospital in serious condition. This morning, police have not determined if those shootings are connected. A pregnant Anderson mother who police say was shot in the head by her boyfriend a week ago, she's died. Alexis Watson was pregnant with twins when police say her boyfriend, Skylar White, shot her back on August the 2nd. She passed away on Saturday. Court documents say White told his mother it was an accident, but he did not get help, immediate help for her. Watson was 21 weeks pregnant. Police say the unborn twins were pronounced dead last week. She had been on life support since the shooting, but police say she had no brain activity. White has been charged with murder and terminating a human pregnancy. It is 434. Despite efforts to try and save his life, the Boone County Sheriff's Office say that a 58-year-old inmate has died. Around 11.15 Saturday night, corrections officers tried to help 58-year-old Prince McGoy of Indianapolis. They say he was sweating and complaining of chest pain. While evaluating him, they say his condition got worse. The first responders then transported McGoy to the hospital where he later died. He just turned himself in on August 8th and was being held at the Boone County Jail on a $1,000 bond for probation violation. The Southern Indiana man accused in a bizarre murder conspiracy, he pleaded not guilty in an Alaska courtroom on Friday. Uh, cameras were allowed inside the state court hearing where 21-year-old Darren Schillmiller was arraigned on murder charges for the death of Cynthia Hoffman. Uh, prosecutors say the 19-year-old woman's friends lured her to an Anchorage hiking trail back in early June. They bound her, shot her in the head, and left her in a river. Hoffman's father, Timothy Hoffman, brought a large frame portrait of Cynthia to that hearing. She says, get him, Daddy. I'm going to be at every court appearance. I'm going to make sure the judge does his job. I'm going to hopefully make sure that they get the full sentence. Because that boy needs to pay one way or another. Uh, the prosecutors claim the show. So does everybody else involved. They all need to pay. Uh, prosecutors claim that Shill Miller posed online as a millionaire and he offered $9 million to teen friends of Hoffman's to rape and murder someone. In exchange, they were sent him pictures and video of the crime. At 436, residents down in Johnson County will get an update from federal officials this week about planned sewer work near a tainted industrial site. Sewer work will begin near in Franklin, near where the electronics manufacturer Amphenol once operated. Some tests have confirmed groundwater and sewer vapors in the community have cancer-causing chemicals exceeding the Indiana safe limits level. Crews will 
replace damaged sewers and remove contamination from the Amphenol site. That remains around the sewers. Now, the meeting will be on Wednesday. It will be held at the Johnson County Library down in Franklin. The meeting will start at 5 o'clock in the library's community room. RTV6 is getting results. New school zone signs will be up in a neighborhood on the city's west side after a concerned mother reached out to RTV6 for help. Desiree Mitchell's son is a second grader at Stoutfield on the corner of Sam Jones Expressway and Holt Road. She's concerned about his safety because there are no school zone signs on either road, which are very busy. I definitely think the school zone sign should be in place um, at both intersections just for the kids' safety. People think it's like a highway. They really fly down there. And you have semis, tons of semis. So Wayne Township Schools tells RTV6 the location of the school zone signs is determined by the Department of Public Works. The district says it could not have any point on this decision. So we reached out to DPW and the department is responding. It now plans to add two new 25 mile per hour school zone signs along Holt Road by the end of this week. Well, for the second time in just a week, a group of people vandalized a Carmel Youth Sports Organization and the vandals were caught on camera doing all of the damage. Well, this happened at Badgers Field in Carmel where the Carmel Dads Club operates. The group broke into several buildings, spray painted and destroyed the property. They also stole supplies from the concessions area all told that they did we're told that they did more than four thousand dollars in damage and the president of the Carmel Dads Club wants them caught and it was just kind of disappointing we're not used to that happening around here and uh, we're just a youth sports organization that tries to provide a bunch of opportunities for kids and it was just disappointed to see that it happened well the Carmel Police Department is investigating these crimes please call them if you know who did this a Tennessee inmate wanted for killing a person. Administrators are saying is back in jail this morning. After the break, here from the man who found the escaped inmate lurking on his front porch. Uh, plus, here's a question. What are the topics you hate talking about with your spouse? Is money one of them? Why more Americans are avoiding talking finances? But first, let's check in with Todd. And it is the Storm Team 6 alert day today. Raphael as we'll be tracking some storms in central Indiana. Most of them are off to our west right now, but these will curve and make their way here into Indiana as the day progresses. We'll talk about the timeline and the threats for you coming up in your Storm Team 6 forecast. The time now is 439. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tonight at Rubens Mattress and Furniture. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. Today marks two years since a white nationalist plowed his car into a group of counter protesters in Charlottesville, Virginia, killing Heather Heyer. Last year, as people marched against hate on the one year anniversary, the city was essentially on lockdown with a huge police presence. But this year, Charlottesville is planning a softer police presence during Unity Day's events to mark the day. National Security Advisor John Bolton is in London today, where he will meet with key players in the new British government. It's expected he will urge Britain to toughen its stance on Iran and the Chinese telecom firm Jiawei. This trip marks the highest ranking U.S. official visit to the United Kingdom since Boris Johnson became Prime Minister last month. Bolton is not expected to meet with Johnson while in London. At 4.43, an escaped inmate wanted for murder is now back in Custody. A number of agencies helping local authorities capture Curtis Ray Watson on Sunday, about 50 miles northwest of Memphis. Watson took off from the West Tennessee State Penitentiary on Wednesday while working on work detail. Investigators say after he escaped, he sexually assaulted and killed a corrections administrator. Watson was serving an active sentence for especially aggravated kidnapping. The man who reported Watson says that he was prepared for anything. I prepared for if he tried to come inside, and then we call uh, 911. They sent out their, their representative, and from there, uh, with God's help, they got it. And uh, our, our community should be uh, relieved that he's back in custody. 
His prior conviction of child abuse expired in 2011. He now faces a number of new charges. Uh, police in Hong Kong, they're clashing with pro-democracy protesters yet again at a number of locations during the 10th straight weekend of these protests. At least nine people injured in the protest, according to Hong Kong police. One man in serious condition and one in stable condition. Police in riot gear, as you can see, often firing tear gas canisters at the crowd in an attempt to break this up. Almost 600 people were arrested over the weekend. Nothing can ruin a cruise faster than a stomach bug. That's why the CDC tries to prevent onboard illnesses by regularly inspecting all of those ships. A Carnival Cruise Line ship recently flunked one of those inspections. The Carnival Fantasy received a score of 77. The CDC considers any grade below 85 failing. Inspectors reported finding food storage and preparation violations, a dirty swimming pool, and brown water coming from shower heads. A carnival now says it, it has corrected those issues and wants officials to reinspect that ship. He's back from vacation at 444. Let's check in with Todd Clausen on the Storm Team 6 alert day. Yeah, Raphael, we're in alert mode primarily for later in the day and then into the overnight hours. So 24 hours from now, I think the storms will kind of be winding down. So you hear the alert mode this morning. There are a few showers as you see here on Storm Team 6 radar, uh, but this is not really prompting the alert day. It's for later on this afternoon, which I'll get to more in just a second, but we need to focus on these storms this morning as well as they're making their way through the area. Hartford City, some heavy rainfall making its way into your area. In fact, the entire county, Blackford County, you're going to be seeing some decent rain over the next 15 to 20 minutes. That heavy rain, though, has crossed over Interstate 69 and is continuing off towards the east. Some light rain up near Peru back towards Logansport. And that's really just about it as far as the rain goes this morning. There's a few spotty showers off to our west, uh, but that's nothing really to write home about. Otherwise, you see skies that are partly cloudy. It is warm. It is muggy for just about everybody, but our issues will come in later on this afternoon and into the evening hours. Kind of a broken line of storms stretching from St. Louis back towards Kansas City, but then you see this cluster of storms, and that's what's going to be heading in our direction late tonight and eventually into the overnight hours. And as these storms come through, there will be the potential that some of them could be strong to severe. By far the biggest threat is going to be damaging wind as these storms move through, as well as some hail and lightning. As far as the risk, we're in the slight risk across most of Central Indiana, Bloomington, Greensburg, Richmond, Indy, up towards Lafayette. You notice the enhanced risk as you work your way back into central Illinois. So the storms will be a little stronger probably in Illinois because they're moving through during the peak heating of the day. As they make their way into central Indiana, we're getting more towards uh, the sun setting and then into the overnight hours. That kind of helps us out just a little bit. So as we go through TrueCast, here's what you look at as we go hour by hour at 1 o'clock. There's probably not a whole lot going on, so I wouldn't really worry about too much in the way of rainfall for your lunch hour but then as we progress into the afternoon hours a few storms will start to blossom but it's really this evening at 9 30 that that cluster of storms will make its way through central indiana with the heavy rainfall lightning and also some very very gusty winds and then we'll maintain some isolated storm chances in the forecast into the morning commute tomorrow so overnight tonight make sure you have that storm shield app downloaded in case any warnings do get issued while you are sleeping that'll wake you up and you'll be able to take the appropriate precautions. 72 right now, the dew points in the mid 60s. It's warm, it's muggy. Temperatures right now in the 60s and 70s anywhere you go across central Indiana. And as we work our way throughout the day today, a lot of the temperatures are going to be determined by how much in the way cloud cover or rain we see throughout the day. More clouds, the lower your temperatures will be. More in the way of sunshine, you could easily shoot up into the 90s. We'll kind of cut the difference for you here with temperatures that'll be in the mid 80s through the 5 o'clock hour. Here is how it breaks down as far as the rain chances throughout the day today. Again, there will be a spotty storm here and there through 7 p.m., but then overnight tonight, they really, really ramp up into tomorrow morning's commute. Here's your seven-day planning forecast. Once we get past the storms tomorrow morning, the rest of the week, nice and quiet for us with mostly sunny skies, lower humidity as well towards the middle to latter half of the week with high temperatures that'll be in the low to mid-80s. Lauren. All right, Todd, thank you so much. Here's a live look at I-465.
Drive in Brookville Road on the east side of town. This is part of that closure in one direction of I-465. That's the eastbound, northbound side. Let's take a look at our traffic now map. I'm going to show you the closure and then your best ways around it. So this is the part that's closed eastbound to northbound I-465 over on the southeast side of town between I-65 and I-70. That's closed through August 24th. Now for your detour route, you'll need to just take I-65 northbound through the splits and then hop on 70 to get over to the east side of town. But a heads up, even over the weekend, we had stop and go traffic here along the south side and through the downtown area just due to that added traffic. Also want to show you here if you're on I-74 traveling westbound, you will not be able to go northbound on I-465. Instead, you're going to go around this way to the southbound area, head all the way up through downtown and then catch I-70 to get back on northbound I-465. Of course, we're going to continue to monitor this and keep you updated on delays throughout the morning. But let's take a look right now from our in-dot traffic camera. This is I-65 in Washington Street in the downtown area where right now everything is smooth sailing. But of course, we'll let you know if that changes. Raphael? She will keep you on time. Lauren, thank you so much. Do you like talking about your personal finances? Do you? I don't know. But according to a new study, money tops the list of the most taboo topics to talk about. A TD Ameritrade recently polled people about money and found that politics, even health, are easier to talk about than personal finances. And of all the money topics, student debt was the most uncomfortable. In fact, less than half feel that comfortable talking even about college debt with their spouse or partner. Now, we talked to a financial a family therapist who specializes in finances. She mentioned an exercise called the money egg to get couples talking about this taboo topic. Yeah, I, I love this exercise created by Brad and Ted Klontz and Rick Kaler called the money egg. And it's an exercise where you talk about all the memories you had around money that were emotionally laden. You talk about the good memories and the bad memories. And then you kind of create like a motto, a life motto of what money means to you. And a lot of times that can be so insightful for clients just to discover where all their feelings around money came from and those unsaid beliefs that they have attached to money that maybe they're not unaware of. I don't understand that money egg, but I would love to have some scrambled eggs right about now. The study also found that the majority of people think society would be healthier talking about money. All right, pretty interesting. Yeah. Well, a new campaign to get people to quit smoking, targeting their pets. The campaign tells the story of a dog who goes everywhere with his owner who smokes. Well, eventually the dog's health deteriorates. Vets say not only does smoking near pets force them to breathe in that secondhand smoke, but it also gets on their fur. And that means when they groom themselves, they're licking those toxins and their mouths are exposed too. Well, there's proof that smoke particles on fur can cause mouth problems, even cancer in your pets. Do you know the full extent of your job duties? After the break, we'll introduce you to this golf caddy and his newfound responsibilities. You'll have to see this to believe it. Plus, all month long, we're taking a look at programs helping Hoosier students transition to the workforce. Coming up all new at 5 o'clock, our own Alyssa Donovan is highlighting a program offered by Indian Creek High School down in Johnson County. It is 4.51. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Good Morning Indiana. It is 4.55 on your Monday morning. And of course, we're keeping a close eye on traffic as you're heading out there to work early this morning. Here's a live look on the north side, I-65 at 30th Street. You can see we have that ongoing construction in the northbound lanes, down to two lanes there. But everything is traveling smoothly. Of course, we'll keep you updated on any crashes or delays. We know there are plenty of responsibilities that come with being a golf caddy. And one big one would be, you would think, would be carrying those heavy bags. <laughs> but there are many others, like Goose control, of course. Goose control. <laughs> oh, no. It's a real thing. Ask Patrick Reed's caddy, Kessler Corain. During yesterday's final round of the Northern Trust, rather than dealing with the geese in the 13th hole, Reed told Corain to take care of it. Of course. As you, as you may see here in a second, he did. And it did work to some effect. Oh, and see. they are mean, too. <laughs> Geese? I would oh. not be wanting to run yeah. after them. On a bike ride, I avoid them at all costs. because, uh, Especially if they have babies. Then oh, they become yeah. even they more hiss. mean. But Patrick Reed, he went on to win the tournament. So there you go. Didn't affect them all that much. <laughs> Liberty National Golf Course. Imagine that. Geese in New Jersey. Yeah, look, imagine, <laughs> welcome back. <laughs> How was New Jersey? Yeah, New Jersey good? was great. 
So I mean, New York is better, but we'll, we'll talk later about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no wars here. Just let's stick with the weather. And it's just a river between us. We're fine. <laughs> <laughs> better side of the river. But go ahead. There's weather All to right. talk about. Outside right now, we're dealing with some spotty showers moving through. Nothing major here this morning for your commute. The better storm chances will actually be later on this evening and then eventually into the overnight hours. So that's the severe threat later on tonight. Anything we see here throughout the morning hours, just be a spotty shower here and there as we work our way throughout the next uh, seven days. We'll continue to have some storms tomorrow morning, but once we get to Wednesday, we are in great shape going forward with sunshine, lower humidity, and temperatures that'll be in the 80s. We'll talk more about the storm chances for today coming up when Good Morning Indiana continues. The time now is 4.57. Stay with us. We'll be right back.